I am afraid. That is one of the most used statements that we have to hear today from many people, whether they're confessing it publicly or they are sighing secretly in their secret places in their houses. Many people are afraid of tomorrow. And there are a lot of things that make people afraid, and we are going to look at them. But I come with a message, fear not, for God is with you. Welcome to GMTV 42. This is Teacher Masai bringing you the word of God that will encourage you for such a time as this. So fear not, for the Lord is with you. Why are people so much afraid? Even those ones who cannot confess publicly that they are afraid, you will find that they are always afraid of one thing or two. So most people are very afraid because of past experiences. Maybe there are things they have experienced in the past that caused them to be in fear. Some of them are afraid of unknown grounds. For example, 2022 is a ground that is not known to any one of us apart from God. And therefore, many people are afraid. They try to think about 2022, and they do not know what outcome will be there. They're trying to think about 2022, and they get anxious about it. But I want to tell you, fear not, for God has already gone ahead of us. He is in 2022, for he is a God of all ages. We have also other people who are afraid because of what they have seen or what they have heard. You've heard a lot of things in your life about people speaking against your life, against your career, against your dreams, and against your destiny, and you are afraid. Or maybe you have seen that ahead of you things are very difficult and many people become so much afraid. Some people are always afraid again because of what they have done against God. But I'm here to encourage you and to tell you again, do not fear. Even if you've done anything against God, there is only one way out. Come before him boldly. Ask him for forgiveness and God will always forgive you. So do not be afraid of anything for the Lord is with you. So with all these fears and anxieties and everything that we are going through, we are going to cross into 2022 and God is waiting for us. God has already prepared a way for all of us. There are things that we can do so that we are not afraid. The things that we can do so that we can do away with fear. We cannot only tell you, do not be afraid. I have to take us through steps that we can take in life that we may cast out fear within us in the name of Jesus Christ. So let us read from the book of Joshua chapter 1. And in verse 2, the Bible says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore arise, go over this Jordan you and all these people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the children of Israel. So God is telling Joshua to arise and go. Whenever we are at a place of fear, the first thing that we have to do is to arise and shake off the dust. Arise and shake off the, the, the doubt that you may be having. Arise and shake away every skepticism that you have because God himself does not want us to stay in the same place of fear, same place of indecision. We have to make a decision to arise. We cannot do it while seated. We cannot do it while dormant. We have to arise and shake off every dust of fear, everything that brings us fear. Shake it out because God is waiting for us to move forward in the mighty name of Jesus. He also tells Samuel, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, he tells him, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing that I have rejected him? There are things that God has already rejected. There are people that God has already put aside. And God is calling us to arise so that we do not dwell in the past and the things that are already lost. We also have things in life that we have already lost, unfortunately. Yet God is telling us not to dwell in the past with the things that we have lost because there are better things ahead of us. Let us not consider what we lost yesterday. Let us consider the things that God has ahead of us. So he says to Samuel, arise, he says to him, fill your horn with oil and go. I'm sending you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. So even the prophet of God, Samuel, was so much afraid because of what was ahead of him, what he was going to face, the people and the task ahead of him, what people would say. But God is still telling us to arise and move forward for he is waiting for us 
there in the name of Jesus Christ. When we come to the New Testament, Mary Magdalene had faced a lot of condemnation. People had condemned her. Men and women of God, we are talking about Pharisees and Sadducees that condemned her. They wanted her to, to be stoned to death. Yet Jesus, after looking at her, asked her question, is there anyone, where are those ones who accused you? Has no one condemned you? Then Mary Magdalene looks around and finds there was no one. Though, so in verse number 11 of John chapter 8, he actually tells Mary to arise and go and sin no more. So this is what I am asking us. Arise and shake off the dust of yesterday. Mary Magdalene was condemned. Have people condemned you? Have people judged you? It is time to arise and move forward. Don't live in the condemnation. As long as you are in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, for there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Just arise and shake off the dust of condemnation. Like someone who was afraid of the king, afraid of the task ahead, do not fear. Arise and shake off the dust of fear. Like Joshua who was afraid to pick up a mantle that was greater than him, God is the God of everything. There is nothing that is hard with our God. I love the story of Jabez because Jabez looked at his life. He looked at his past and he saw despair. He looked at his present and there was despair. He was looking at his tomorrow. There was still despair. When he looked at his life, there was nothing he could do. But he did an honorable thing because the Bible says of all the brothers of Jabez, he did the honorable thing. He went before the Lord. The honorable thing to do now for you is to arise and go before the Lord. Arise and go before the Lord for he has an instruction that he wants to give us. So he looked at his future, present, and past. There was misery, but when he went before the Lord, he found out something different. And the Bible says in verse 10 of 1 Chronicles chapter 4, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, O oh God, that you will bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that you are, your hand will be with me, and that you will keep me from evil. He said that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he had requested. So whatever we request before the Lord, as long as we are in the right standing with God, God will always grant it because he has asked us to ask him. When we ask anything in the name of Jesus, he will give it unto us. So we should not be afraid. So we arise like Jabez. We go and call out on the name of the Lord. Men will arise and would want to call on the name of relatives. Relatives will not amount to much. Many will want to arise and call on the government. The government will not amount to much. But what we have to do is to arise and go before God. Because in the presence of God, there is something that, there is an instruction, there is something that he wants to tell us so that we can move forward. The second thing we have to do is fill our hearts with God's word and then profess that word. We look at, jo we look at uh, Joshua again. He has risen. But God continues to give him instruction. Whenever we arise without God's word, we will not go far. Because the Bible tells us this is the word that is a lamp upon our feet and a light upon our path. That is what will take us to good success. So in Joshua 1, Verse 7, the Bible says, Only be strong and be courageous, that you may observe and do according to the law which Moses, my servant, has commanded you. Do not turn from the right, do not turn from it to the right or to the left, and you may prosper wherever you go. In verse number seven, number 8, he says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. In other words, the God is asking us, as we arise, let us fill our hearts with the instructions of God. We get it through preachings. We get it through the songs that have been sung. We get it through reading the Bible. And we get it through revelation by the Holy Spirit. So arise and fill yourself with the word of God. You fill yourself with the word of God because it gives you instruction. For he says, for then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have good success. Many of us want to prosper. Many of us want to have good success. Good success comes from arising from the dust, asking God what he wants us to do. And when we do it, out of the abundance of our heart, we always pray and worship and fellowship with God. And therefore, we shall have good success. Number three, you have to step forward courageously. 
No, God can tell you something, but you are afraid to move forward. You can become like Jonah. God has given an instruction to this man of God called Jonah, yet he was so much afraid to go to Nineveh that he, flee, he fled to go to another, country, to another country. But when God gives you an instruction, he wants us to do. When we do the word of God, then now we, the success that we want, the prosperity that we want becomes manifest in our lives. Therefore, step forward courageously because God has said. Do not step forward because community has said. Many people would want to marry because their community has told them you are late to marry. And therefore they would want to step forward and marry. That is the community. But are you doing it because God has said? So when God tells us, that is just an example. When God has spoken anything to us, we must step forward and do what God has said. Because he who gives you that vision has that provision for you to go ahead with. Joshua 1 in verse 9, the Bible says, have I not commanded you? It is God who commands us now to move forward because our heart is full with God's word. So God commands us to be, to be strong and to be of good courage. He says, do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you. And therefore we say again, fear not, for God is with you. Wherever he has sent you, he may send you across the borders, he will be with you. He will send you to difficult places, he will be with you. He will send you to a place of promotion, he will be with you. God will always be with you. When God is with you, there is nothing that can come against you. When God is standing with you, everything is possible. When God stands with you, it is no longer your strength, but God's strength. So we have said, arise from that dust. Fill your heart with God's word and profess it. Then step forward because God has said, so when God gives you anything, we look at Noah. God gave Noah a project, a project that he had never done before, but God was with him and he fulfilled a project of building a whole ark. He, when we look at Abraham, God was with Abraham. He told Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your country, go to a place that I will show you. God was there with Abraham and Abraham was successful until his name was changed into Abraham. So whenever God sends you, he will bring it to pass. When Abraham embarked on that epic journey, no one ever knew if Abraham was going to succeed. But God was ahead of him. So when God is with you, do not fear. Moses was there. He was sent to a diplomatic trip to a place which was dangerous. He went. He was afraid, yes. But he went all the same because I am had sent him. When we look at Gideon, he went to a military expedition and God told him, I don't need a multitude. I only need 300. So when God sends you, he gives you the strategy. He guides you. He sends you and he knows exactly what what he's going to do. When Mary and Joseph were given the duty of parenting Messiah, it was not possible. So nothing is impossible from military to parenting a Messiah. Nothing is impossible with our God. And this is what Jeremiah asks. And I will read from the New Living Translation, Jeremiah 32 and verse 27. I am the Lord, the God of all peoples of the world. He is your God. He is my God. Then he asks this question. Is anything too hard for me? Ask yourself and ask this question back to God. Is there anything too, too difficult for you, God? Is anything hard for you? With man, things may seem impossible. With you, things may seem impossible. But with God, all things are possible because he's the God of all nations and the God of all people. Do not be afraid. That same God who created the universe, that same God who spoke the universe into place, that same God who is eternal is your God and he is your father. He is with you and he says this, fear not for I am with you. And this should be your declaration, even as you're stepping into 2022. The next year has things that we do not know, but we know one thing that God has gone ahead. This is your declaration, I shall fear not, for God is with me. About my family, I shall fear not, for God is with me. About my job, I shall fear not, for God is with me. Whatever you are embarking upon, fear not, for God is with you. And I pray today that God may be with you. 
And I pray today that God will give you the grace to arise from the dust of condemnation, to arise from the dust of doubt, to arise from the doubt of lack and scarcity, to arise from that dust and fill your heart with God's word and fill your heart with the knowledge and the wisdom of God. Then step forward boldly because God has gone ahead of you. May he make your way prosperous. May his shine, may his face shine upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.